Thomas on the snap. Got it. Going to give it to him. Keep it this time again. Try to go outside. Put a little move on. Oh, five. Touchdown, Darren Thomas. Touchdown, Darren Thomas. Oh, my. What a move. Darren Thomas and the Ducks persevere against Washington and Oregon is now 9-0 for the first time in program history. And as we get things started here on Inside the Pack, the latest AP poll, the Ducks still number one, still with 49 first place votes. The new number two, though, is Auburn after Boise fell from second to fourth. Stanford up three spots to seven. Michigan State into the top ten. Hello and welcome to this first November edition of Inside the Pack. I'm Tom Ward. He is Nick Krupke and we are joined this week by former Portland State running back and defensive back Kevin Leonard. Kevin, thanks for being here on a week where Oregon didn't play their best football, but it hardly mattered against Washington. Uh, true. Thanks for having me. And yeah. yeah, Washington is just not quite the level that Oregon is, and it was very apparent there when, on last Friday Saturday night. Well, for people who have watched this rivalry over the years, they're a little funny to be apologizing for a 37-point win, but uh, Oregon has high standards right now, and really nothing short of perfection down the stretch is going to get them to that BCS title game. Agreed. And when you set the bar that high and you're, you put the ownership on your players, that's what they, they expect now. Well, and Nick, in Oregon State's case, they go to the Rose Bowl, once again, set up for a late season run and kind of fall flat. That offense just couldn't move the ball late yeah, in the they game. They really reverted back to some things we saw earlier in the season. I mean, UCLA on the ground game really controlled the clock. The Beavers didn't help them. Just 4 of 11 on third down was a big bugaboo for them early in the year. Came back to nip them again. And those final three drives... Three and out on those final four drives there, which didn't give him a chance, and then four back there with the game winner. And uh, that's kind of what we saw early in the year, and now it's back again. How do they kind of finish this out now? We're looking at a bowl game bid. Gets a lot tougher here the next month. It does. And, you know, the final play at Oregon State, it's going to be debated for a while. Yeah. I mean, did, was there a second left? Was there not a second left? I mean, a good analogy is, you know, if that play is right and they look at the clock and they put a second back, then every other play in football is wrong, isn't it, Kevin? That's right. You know, you just you can't ever know and just have to play through it. Well, certainly, and the Beavers have to persevere now because if they slip up one more time down the stretch, I mean, it's bye-bye bowl season. But let's get the show going here. And while the Ducks were coming off perhaps their most impressive victory of the season at USC last week, the Huskies have had a rough go of it the past two weeks, being outscored 85-14 to by Arizona and Stanford. Set up an easy win for Oregon, right? Four-time Super Bowl champion Joe Montana in the house at Autzen, his son a freshman at Washington. The Huskies going without all-everything quarterback Jake Locker, Keith Price getting the start instead. And for the first time this season, the Ducks held scoreless in the first quarter. Later, though, they punched it in. LaMichael James, one yarder. It makes it 9-3. to three. By now, though, you know the drill on the first touchdown of the game. Go for one. Nope, Nate Costa flips it to Rob Beard, who walks in for the two-point conversion. It's 11-3. to three. Just before the half, Thomas looks like a harmless run for a first down, but he turns it into a touchdown as he tight ropes the sideline. 34 yards make it 18 to three. The Huskies got a field goal to make it 18-6 at the half. The Dogs had the first bite in the second half though. Price to DeAndre Goodwin, 17 yard score. It's a five point game at 18-13 Oregon, but UW's kick coverage is not good to say the least and the Ducks have some of the best at bringing the ball back up the field. True freshman Josh Huff turns on the Jets and rips off an 80 yard return to the Washington six yard line. That sets up this. Next play, Darren Thomas helping deliver the mail on a Saturday. Jeff Mail, his 10th touchdown of the season, makes it 25-13 Oregon. And you know Oregon is all about the second half. Grind it out and wear them down. They did that. Up 25-16 more from LaMike. A quiet day overall, but in for the 14-yard score. James finished with 121 yards rushing late in the third. Thomas once more helping put the game out of reach. A little red light, green light, stop and go action there with a Husky D. DT's second score of the game, 39-16 Oregon. After threes, you see Mason Foster laying on the hot sauce there. Fourth quarter after a big return from Cliff Harris. James in from a yard out, his third touchdown, 17th of the season, 34th, 31st score in two years as a duck. And then how about this, Kenyon Barner playing in his first game since that concussion in Pullman nearly a month ago. 30-yard jaunt for six. Oregon outscored the opponent in the fourth quarter this year 87-7, and for the first time in school history, 
The Ducks are 9-0, oh, 53-16. Oregon's seventh straight win in the series, all of those by at least 20 points, 243 yards passing for DT, 121 rushing for LaMike. Yeah, and since 1960, the Huskies now 1-10-1 against top-ranked teams, and hard to say that really felt like the Ducks had an off day. 522 total yards, 31 first downs, but 10 penalties for 107 yards really hampered them early on. Well, Kevin, it was a shaky start for the Ducks on both sides of the ball, but what we've seen from Oregon over the course of this season is they wear down the opponent. No matter how bad things go early, they persevere. They do, and they're just very good at how consistent they are and how, how much they keep coming at you with waves of people. You see Kenny Rowe there with the near interception early in the game, and I mean, this is one he'd like to have back. It really is. He sits down on this real nice, plays it right. And then fourth and two, once again, it was the same theme on both sides of the ball. They had the play, they just couldn't execute the play. True, they had the right play, I think, just they didn't get it done, didn't get the drive that they needed. And then on the defensive side of the ball, in the second half, they begin to get after Price pretty good. Yeah, after a while, just run around, doesn't seem to work, and as fast as Oregon's defense is, it causes great havoc. Well, Kenny Rowe there and Josh Cadu, and then on the rollout, he meets Kenny Rowe again. Yeah, this blind side, defenses love to hit people like that when they don't see you coming. <laughs> and then they went to the Wildcat, almost a little bit of a desperation move late in the game for Washington. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Not really a good play, the defense sat right on it, and we're very disciplined in their actions. Well, uh, on the flip side, Oregon, 10 penalties, 107 yards, as we mentioned in the game. I mean, they really have to eliminate that stuff, or it seems to me like, especially maybe against Arizona, possibly the Civil War, they, they're going to find themselves in real trouble down the stretch. Yeah, they've got to calm down and stay more balanced with it. I think they did all right with with what's going on with Washington and, and the rivalry there. I think they got a little excited, but they were okay. Yeah, certainly a chippy game early on and uh, maybe led to some of those penalties, but now three games to go for Oregon to make it to the BCS national title, title game.